So the opportunities out this are just ideal. It's something I've always been interested in. I like archaeology. But I wish I'd found it when I was younger. Last year we did some small trenches around the park and uh, in this field where we are now we found three post holes in a line. So small pits that had been cut down uh, through the topsoil at an undisclosed age, so we don't know how long ago that was when we were digging them. And uh, we found in them, we didn't find any charcoal but we found some peat. And we had that peat dated and it came out around about 1290 BC, so in the sort of Middle Bronze Age period. And we um, weren't sure that that was an accurate date, but this year we've come back and we've opened a much larger trench, basically chasing the archaeology, so following those post holes round. And so what we've got in the trench behind me is um, two lines of a rectangular building with rounded ends. And that was us following the post holes around with the, obviously with the JCB uh, earlier in the week. So here they're doing the first clean of it. And some of the post holes are really nice and clear. They're quite large. They've got charcoal in them. Some of them are less clear and are little areas of charcoal that appear maybe to be the bottoms of pits or maybe smaller posts. So we're just scraping back around. Um, we've got some circular structures with some charcoal in them. So there's one here, one there, one there and one over there. Um, so we're just cleaning around it to um, define it a bit more. The problem is that this has all been really, really heavily ploughed out. So in the, um, along the, the, the uh, access of the site, there are furrows from rig and furrow cultivation, and they have taken out some of the archaeology. But then, of course, later ploughing has ploughed right down. So actually the original ground level would have been much higher, and we've only got the bottom of these features. So it's possible we've lost some features altogether. Uh, we've certainly uh, lost finds because they've been ploughed up now we found a lot of flints on the top surface of the field uh, last year and they date to the early to late Neolithic. So we weren't quite sure with the Neolithic date, maybe for the flints and maybe Bronze Age for the building, whether there's a possibility that the building is earlier in date. And obviously this excavation is what that's about. So trying to recover finds, certainly we'll be recovering charcoal because we can see it in the features and then that'll go off to be processed and dated and we'll be able to find it out a lot from the soil. But so far it's not a very finds rich site. There's not a huge number of finds. There's some uh, flints that have been worked. We've got some quartz that's worked, which is really nice. And um, that's quite unusual to be able to identify work quartz. And we have a specialist, uh, Torben Ballin, who uh, we'll send all those finds to and obviously he'll be able to do a report for us. Uh, we'll send off the soil for analysis and they'll be able to tell us what's in the soil, uh, what sort of wood the posts were made from and then of course get a radiocarbon date that we'll be able to tell when the building was constructed. So we're expecting Stuartfield Primary School. Um, the project here is going to involve lots and lots of children over the five years. We've got lots of classes coming to the dig. Um, we're here today to take part in the archaeology dig. Um, we come almost every year. Uh, once or twice to see the dig. They come and we'll do an introduction, then they'll come and do some digging, which is their very favourite thing. So they love getting dirty and obviously finding things. We're going to be sieving the um, mud to see if there's anything like um, flint. I am sieving uh, this thing of rocks because we are looking for flints and uh, quartz. We'll also show them some finds and they get a chance to draw and colour and depending on their ages do some different activities in the site hut. I quite enjoy just being with the kids and doing uh, a bit of that and um, helping them to discover. Some of them get really hooked on the digging bit of it and they just keep dig, dig, digging. And some, it, it's the starting point for them for a career. If you want to be an archaeologist it teaches you like how to, how to do, how to dig up things as well. So I think it's, it's quite nice to help me integrate as well, get to know people. Um, so yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Hard work, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's brilliant. I mean, it's great. It, it certainly gives your mood a lift. Um, I go home, yes, I'm tired, so I'm sleeping better. Um, and, uh, and, so, and it's a social benefit um, because I'm, I'm meeting people that I, I've never met before. Um, everybody's really friendly and informative, you know, so I, I mean, I don't feel out of place. Uh, I feel included and in that I'm actually doing something constructive. So, yeah, I'm having a really good time.
so we advertise for volunteers on all of these projects so a number of the people who are digging behind me have worked on projects with me before actually some of them are professional archaeologists some of them are archaeologists but are not working in archaeology and come out here in their holidays um, people take holidays during the dig time so that they can actually come to these projects and some are local volunteers who have never been on a dig before who just fancy getting involved and uh, quite often get really hooked by it especially the local people here who have loved the park you know people here who live locally have known this park for decades so this advertised and I thought well why not you know it'd be quite n nice to know more about what, what uh, the history of the park and uh, I'm sort of a uh, I work part time so I've got time so I, I just thought yeah why not come along. I'm here because I met Ali probably about 15, 16 years ago and um, she was one of the lecturers on the course I did at university so I did a degree at the lifelong learning at the university um, and but that took quite some time to do but I met a whole load of nerdish people like myself and uh, a network of people t so that I could um, join in digs wherever but I wish I'd found it when I was younger I wish I'd found archaeology when I was younger because you got to be reasonably physically fit and it's, uh, it's really because it's outside I quite enjoy being outside I enjoy doing a bit of physical I'm absolutely fascinated by what might have happened in the landscape beforehand we know that there are other sites in the, in, the, in the park. So, for example, we found a medieval house behind us in the woods. We found uh, military training grounds from the second half of the 19th century into the First World War, uh, where there's a mansion house, a ruined you know, house. So we know some of the upstanding archaeology, but actually to find this buried there, you know, it's really exciting for the local people, because then you can start to visualise what this area was like, you know, 3,000, 5,000 potentially years ago. I'm learning about um, kind of about history and about um, what life was like back then and how they used everything to build houses and all that. Something we can't give within the, the classrooms ourselves, um, so it's nice to have people that are experts taking the children in, giving them the opportunities to be free and active in there and seeing what they can find because that's always what they're looking for, see if they can find something. Um, this ties in quite nicely with um, aspects of history, a bit of science in there as well, um, a wee bit of the technology side of it. So there's lots of aspects we can do when we're here. Back at school we can you know, find out about that, researching it, um, we can write about it as well and share it with other pupils in the school. So it's lent itself to quite a lot of areas of the curriculum that we can um, delve into and, and explore a bit further. I think what we'll probably be doing is looking at writing up a little bit about maybe what they found and having a little look into where the, the Stone Age, Bronze Age, Neolithic people um, came from and maybe the kind of idea of what this might have looked like um, and again kind of placing themselves in the timeline of where that was and again giving a wee sense of what it looked maybe like 3,000 years ago because the immediate history is easy enough to do you've got plenty there to pick up on but the past is a bit more difficult so this is just prime, prime for them, it's really good. So yesterday we were digging with the children and uh, one of our volunteers was scraping and showing them how to dig and a flint just popped up when she was doing that and of course they thought A we'd planted it and B it was as easy as that. Of course it isn't but they were really good, they scraped away, they really enjoyed it because it's great exercise, it's good company, it's good fun um, and you know they really enjoy all, all the aspects of the dig particularly on a sunny day like this yesterday it was raining not quite so fun it gets really slippy and muddy and we had to finish early but on a day like this the volunteers really really enjoy it